You're listening to The Dope Experience with Rombi Bryant, Javier Collins, and Sal Vergara. Our conversations revolve around people looking to evolve and transform into the next phase of their lives. We're here to help them navigate this journey by developing one's perspective every day. Welcome back to The Dope Experience. I'm Sal Vergara with my esteemed colleagues, Javier Collins and Rombi Bryant. We've got another fun show today. We've got our friend, Mr. Seth McCauley on the line. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm yeah. great. How you guys doing? Did y'all catch the, the hook em horn sign? That started early already. That's right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like we haven't talked in forever. What it's been like, what, 20 minutes since we last talked? Yeah. It's been yeah. forever, yeah. man. 20 uh, minutes. Yeah. Exactly. What the, I can't remember how you guys, how Rombi and Javier uh, met you. I, I, I'm trying to figure out how we uh, put, put each other together. Who met me? Yeah. It, yeah. Was at, uh, it was last fall at your, I think it was your first or second in transformation networking. That's set. right. At the yeah. star. At the star. At the that's star. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, um, you know, Seth yeah. has more than 20 years of diverse human resource experience in a ton of different industries uh, engineering, wireless telecommunications, uh, restaurant and hospitality, software, retail and most recently construction. Uh, he's the head of HR for Kirby Smith Machinery out of uh, Q, Q Rombie here, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Um, <laughs> Seth Great is a nice. true Renaissance HR professional. So uh, we're glad to have him on the show. Um, he and I've known each other for what, maybe two years? Um, about right, yeah, about two years. And despite being a proud graduate of a fine institution, UT in Austin, um, He's grown to be a great friend and an industry confidant who I I uh, cherish uh, quite a bit, and uh, we're happy to have him on the show. Um, you and I first met over barbecue, right? Like, was it ten fifty? I don't think uh, that is correct. I don't think you've been to ten fifty uh, in Richardson. It's a great, great Texas barbecue, Rami. Good, good Texas barbecue. That is right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was it was late two thousand eighteen, and and we talked about the power of networking, mm -hmm. and. Um, I got my current role through a couple of industry friends uh, who introduced me to my current boss. Uh, and you also got the lead to your current role through a mutual friend of ours, uh, a fine gentleman, uh, Mr. David Alexander. That's and correct. Yeah. During this time of in transformation, and here on the show, Rambi Javi and Eric call, call it in transformation in lieu of in transition, you established a very unique personal brand. And uh, you did it through LinkedIn videos. You did it through vlogs. And eventually you created a podcast, Six Degrees or Less. And this term, you came up with the term relationshipping. And I, I steal it a lot. I do credit you. So I just know that I do credit you uh, when I Appreciate use it. Uh, but how did you come up with that term? And what are the principles behind that? Oh, uh, boy. How did I come up with it? Well, um, I, I guess... I guess how it started, it was kind of about that time we met. So late 2018, I was, uh, I was in transformation myself and I, um, I, I vividly remember, I think it was early December. I was, I was living in uptown Dallas and I was driving to Frisco for a doctor's appointment. And I had this thought that kept going through my head because <clears throat> I was in transformation. So I was doing a lot of networking, traditional networking. And, um, uh, and I've always just been good at networking. It just kind of came easy for me. I was just kind of struggling with why are people, why do people have such a hard time with this? I don't, I don't get it. It's really not, it's not that difficult. And from, from, uh, from, down, from downtown to Frisco, I came up with this idea. I thought, you know, I've been hearing all this stuff about LinkedIn video and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to throw something out there. And so I, I parked the car and I, I think in two takes, I, I did a LinkedIn video. I think it's about two minutes. And it was all about, um, uh, I called it the N word networking. And so I was being a little bit punchy with it. And I said, Hey, I don't understand why there's, why some people really struggle with this. And, and, um, and I, uh, within a matter of days, I think it had, you know, several thousand views. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, this is, this is so elementary. This is, this is so simple. So I did another one. I did another one. I think it was probably like my second or third is when I kind of came up with this idea of relationshiping. I thought, you know, um, Networking, the term networking kind of gets a, a bad rap, right? I think it's it's thrown around a lot, it's misused. And 
people kind of had this connotation of, of like, well, I got to go to this place for five to seven. I don't know. I gotta, I like these cards. I got to. It just felt so, just so. Man, like I don't really want to. Like, I have to do it. I don't really want to do it. And so, mm-hmm. kind of thought, well, really, it's really more about relationships. It's. I thought, well, why not just call it relationship? It's kind of a silly sounding thing, but I was like, yeah, why not? So that was it. And I just started using that hashtag when I did my videos and when I did my posts. And and then, um, you know, it's a couple months went by. That's when I had this idea of putting together a podcast. And I did it all around networking or relationshiping. And so I call it six degrees or less, kind of based on that theory about, you know, we're all connected by uh, by six degrees or, or less of separation. And, and I thought, I'll just focus on people within my network and just have one-on-one conversations. I said, I don't know if that's going to be interesting to people or not, but who cares? It's my podcast and it's going to be interesting to me. And I, I'm going to, I'm going to do it no matter what. And so I just, I just did it. And that's it. That's, that's how I came up with it. That is uh that's some very great feedback, man. I remember uh, actually uh, to what Sal was saying earlier on how uh, you and I actually first met was in one of Sal's uh, first or second in transformation workshop. And that I remember vividly, that was the story that you shared with the group about your journey, about how you, I didn't know you started started filming like right in the car. That's pretty awesome. But, <laughs> but I remember. It kind of became my trademark. I kind of, I, it was funny because a couple of times I've done videos not in the car and people have been like, hey, how come you're not in the car? And I'm like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I didn't know the car was a thing here. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, but but the fact that you had the idea and the idea made sense to you on the way from Dallas to Frisco and you pulled over and just jumped right in. Just did it, no. I think that level of uh, courageousness is really important and it's really rewarding uh, when we, you know, when we play it through and, and play it out. So, but that was that was the story of, of your journey and how I think you had had, uh, don't get me to lying, but uh, at least a dozen episodes under your belt at that time. That sounds about right. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. You weren't, you weren't just beginning, but you weren't like a seasoned, seasoned veteran just yet. Yeah. And, and you were no. just starting to get your, the winding of sales and it was about re- relationship. So yeah. that for me is just a, an awesome story, right? On many levels, on your own personal testimony, what, what got you from one state, transforming into another mm-hmm. and how you're able to sort of uh, package that up and uh, you know, share it with others. So in light, in light with, that, with regards to relationship and what, what are some, uh, some steps or what are some, some ways, some high points, some key elements that you could share with us and our listeners about uh, the formula of approaching relationship, right? You call it uh, essentially networking, which I totally agree with your position, how it could be work and it could be unenjoyable, mm-hmm. but I like how you reframe it. And that reframing gives it a, a much more positive outlook for me at least. So, so yeah, just, uh, you know, some formula that you could share that you know we could sort of connect with and utilize. Yeah. Um, Real quick, before I go to that, I did want to say, you know, I, I think, you know, you, you, something you mentioned there that I wanted to piggyback on was, um, you know, that it, it really did, it did happen like that. Literally, I had this thought and I thought, I'm just going to put it on video. And I think I did two two t- tries and I just put it out there. And I think, um, I think sometimes where people get hung up or stuck is, is they overthink it. What if it doesn't look right? What, what are people going to say? What if I said this? Well, what did I say this right? Does it, and and I think at some point in time you just got to say, I don't care. I don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't care. This is this is my voice. It's my opinion, and I'm just going to put it out there. And this is me. And you just got to be, you got to be vulnerable, and you got to be. You just got to be real, and got to be raw. And just got to be. You got to be you. And and I think in years past, my the old me maybe I would have overthought it, and I would have. You know, well, it doesn't look right. The lighting went right. This one right. Or I didn't say this right. Or I, I mean, and I just would have just overanalyzed it, over critiqued it. And I think that's where sometimes people get hung up on like, well, I, I want to do a LinkedIn post, but I don't really know what to say and do. And I think sometimes you just got to you just got to jump in and do it. And uh, so so there's that. So um, the formula, you know, I don't I don't I don't know. There's really a formula. I'm not a very um, I'm more of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of kind of guy. I'm not really a. 
systematic or anything like that. I guess I just try to, uh, as best I can, try to go into any uh, networking event or, or relationshiping uh, event or, or scenario with the idea of how can I help somebody? How can I give back? So I think the, the, the problem, I think, if there's a problem with networking, you know, so many people go into it with what's in it for me? Well, you know, who can get me a job? Who can get me a lead? Who can get me a sales lead? I mean, you know, me, 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 me. And, um, and we're all human. We're all going to, you know, if you're in a transition and transformation looking for a job, I mean, it's only natural that you're kind of thinking about you. But as much as you can, I try to go into it as I'm going to find somebody there at this event tonight who needs me somehow. How can I help them? How can I, how can I be very intentional about trying to find somebody that I can help. Maybe I can get them connected to somebody that's going to help them land a job. Maybe I can recommend a book. Maybe there's a something I can, uh, a podcast. Maybe there's someone who's out there who's looking for something that I can help them with. And so I try to, um, I try, I try to lead with that. Um, but I also try to, um, you know, uh, in terms of kind of process after I leave uh, an event, I'm not really big into business cards that don't, that don't do much for me. I mean, you know, you go to an event, you're going to collect here, some here or there, but, um, but I almost have a, I have a game. I play with myself and I try to remember names and, and details about people as best I can. And then immediately when I leave, I'll go to LinkedIn and instead of sending the obligatory, just canned LinkedIn, like, Hey, connect with me. Um, I'll send a personalized invite, you know, and, and, and make it personal to go back to a conversation, something that we had a conversation that uh, at that event that evening, that night, um, and then try to do something to move the relationship forward. Like, hey, we talked about, <clears throat> you know, this, this, and this, or, or, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on on this. Maybe we can get together for coffee next week or or what have you and try to find some way to move it forward. But I also, personally, I think that's important. Mm. So, uh, so how so, important how- is knowing your story in networking, your own personal story? Ooh, how important? And knowing my own personal story, I think... Yeah. Uh, I, I th- ah, boy, that's a great question. Um, I, I've never really thought about that, but I, I think uh, I, I think it. I think you can make even more of a of an impact when you really understand your own story. Um, I mean, when I think about my story, um, if I were to go out and I'm, I'm at a, an event, I'm meeting people for the first time, I think about my story. I mean, I've got this. This chapter, you know, this relationshiping chapter of, of my background and my story, and it's fun to tell that story. But I've also got, uh, you know, I've, I've gone through um, job loss, I've gone through uh, uh, layoffs, and I've gone through um, the job search process, you know, several times over the course of my career. And those are rough times. But um, but I think understanding and being uh, comfortable enough with those those uh, situations to share those. Those, those uh, the high times and the low times with others, I think, makes for makes for a better story. I'll just put it that way. Not not to not to be kind of cheesy, but it makes for a better story. And when you know when you know your story really well and you're comfortable with your story, and you're able to share your story and articulate your story to others, I think it's I think it's I think it's pretty impactful. I think people really uh, resonate. I think it resonates with people. Yeah, and they can. It makes it easier for them to show empathy when you're able to articulate your story. But um, how do you handle, huh? No, I'm saying that's a really good point. The question you raised, I was, I was, uh, sorry to cut you off. Oh yeah, go ahead. So, just go ahead. so one of the things that we, one of the concepts that we talk about here on the Dove Experience is the concept of uh, vulnerability, right? Do you think uh, vulnerability, or or how mm. and how do you think vulnerability is in that context of networking and or relationshiping? Huge, yeah. Uh, I think it makes you more more genuine. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, when you are able to be vulnerable and um, <clears throat> be exposed to a certain extent and 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 be real with people, like, hey, I, I'm I don't have it all together. I don't have all the answers. You know, this is what <clears throat> what worked for me. This is where I've I've stubbed my toe along the way a couple times. Um, I think just being more real and being vulnerable, I think, just makes it. I, I think that it, it kind of it ties back to kind of trust, which is right the foundation of really most relationships is, is trust. 
And so if, if you first meet someone and you're able to be vulnerable and, and, and open up, I think that's going to, that's just going to, the, the trust meter is going to go up. And I think that's just going to kick off. Um, Hopefully, what's what's going to be a really good relationship, friendship, business relationship? Yeah, for some people, it turns into a uh, <laughs> turns into a to a marriage. You never know, right? You never know where things are going to go. But uh, um, but yeah, trust is uh, the foundation of really most all relationships. Yeah. Uh, so I like your term relationshiping. I remember when I uh, when I first got into insurance insurance is the first thing i got into after i retired from football and we have to do a ton of networking we mm -hmm. have business with mortgage loan officers and um realtors and my the uh, my district manager used to tell me well you got you have to treat it like dating when you talk to these realtors and they're not going to send you any leads or work with you the first time you meet them and uh and i always expected like i mean I'm Rombie. I'm from Oklahoma. You, you should send me leads right away, right? And uh, he was like, no, you got to treat it like dating. When you met your wife, did y'all kiss on the first day? Blah, 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 blah. You know how they carry on. Right. I was quick to cut people off if I felt like they were flaky. So how do you handle and manage people that are flaky when you're uh, new to networking and, a new, and new to the networking environment? How do you handle flaky people or people you feel like is flaky? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think that um, <clears throat> for the most part, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, right? I like the, there's a concept I, I learned years ago about having, you know, belief in people and trying to, and, and as best you can, kind of believing that you know, everybody's trying to go into the relationships with the best intentions, but uh, but you realize, you know, some, uh, unfortunately, um, some sooner than, you know, quicker than others that, that people are in it for just for their own personal game, for the wrong, for the wrong reasons. And so um, um, when that happens, um, I, I do what I need to do to kind of shut things down. I mean, we've only got so many hours in a day. We've only got so many um, uh, days in a week and, and our time is, is precious. And it took me a while to realize and really understand how precious my, my time is. Um, by nature, I'm, I'm a people person. Uh, I'm not a people person, people pleaser. Uh, well, I'm a people person too, but you know, um, but I'm a, I'm a people pleaser, right? And so I, I have a hard time saying no to people. And so it's it's been something over the years I've had to work at, and it's not always easy for me. But I've realized that man, time is precious, and uh, and if I get uh, an inkling or a feeling that someone is um, going to uh, abuse my time or going to waste my time or there's not going to be uh, anything fruitful that comes from that relationship, then I will, I'll, I'll make efforts to, uh, uh, to shut it down. Now, what does that look like? I don't mean, I don't, I don't necessarily go back and be like, Hey, I'm shutting you down. I'll just kind of start. I'll just, I'll just pull back. I'll pull back and eventually people will, people will get the joke and, and, uh, I'll, I'll divert my time and attention other places. I like that. Uh, on the total opposite, cause I wear my heart. I mean, I've gotten better but I wear my heart on my sleeve and mm -hmm. if I feel like I have a problem with you and mm -hmm. you continue to try to talk to, I'm going to let you know, because I'm that guy, vice versa. If you don't want to deal with me, let me know. Yeah. So, and it's no hard feelings. It's just, okay, yeah. I get it, but uh, I'm not going like the term I always heard. I'm not going to piss on somebody's leg and tell them it's raining. Like I'm a, <laughs> I'm going to let them know right then and there. Like, and I know that's wrong, and I have to get better at that. And like you said, kind of just ease back. And I know there's a fine line. There's a way of doing it. I'm still trying to, just to be honest, I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Well, I, I, honestly, I wish I had a little bit more of that in, in, in me um, because I wish sometimes there are some times where I wish like I could just, you know, really be like, hey, this is, <laughs> this is not working for either one of us. So why don't we just – all like it is and be done with this but i did yeah. i didn't have some uh interesting conversations with some people some just cutting them off like hey look i understand this this relationship is not working anymore mm -hmm. this business relationship not working anymore and it went completely south to where i had to report it to his boss and my boss because of it because of some of the messages he was sending me mm -hmm. and uh yeah it got pretty ugly so 
going my way, you might hurt some feelings. <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so when it comes to networking on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the people that like the minute you send or accept their request, they send you a sales pitch? Um, oh, sorry, I did that to you, Seth. My apologies. Huh? What's that? I apologize doing that to Seth when I first met him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, here's the deal. This is like um, I um, I realize that you know we all have jobs that we have to do, right? So, I, I do my job and and I uh, I make money doing my job, and salespeople have jobs too, and they make money doing their job, and I respect all that. Um, but but it is it is frustrating. It is annoying, you know, when you when you have someone that reaches out to you, um, appears to be a, a an honest, genuine, like, hey, I'd like to be a part of your network, and you know, maybe we can find time to connect. I just want to learn a little bit more about you. And then the moment you accept, within minutes, sometimes within seconds, you get, you know, very long uh, email. It's 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 easy to tell they just copy and paste <coughs> email back with the, what they're trying to. You know, uh, and then inviting you to, you know, set up time using their, their calendar link. And so that's, for me, that's a, that's a turnoff. Um, I like to, uh, I like to get to know uh, someone as a, as a person um, more before we would kind of dive into like, you know, okay, what, what, what are you selling? Um, Cause maybe I'm buying, maybe I'm not buying, but that's just me. That's just a, it's a turnoff. So. We had uh, talked about this, um, and I, I will attest to the fact that Seth's truck is a good studio, that the acoustics are awesome. <laughs> but no, they legit are. It's, it's a good environment to, to do a podcast. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I've done several there. <laughs> we, had, we had tacos. I mean, anytime Seth and I meet, we're always eating. So this time it was tacos. And uh, we talked about, um, and you asked me the question, what are some of the don'ts or some of the things that I have seen when people are relationshiping with me that I would convey to the masses of don't do this? And you just, Rami brought up a good point of just the immediate, you know, uh, not necessarily bait and switch, but just, uh, you know, you hook them with a, with a connection on LinkedIn and then you sell them. Mm -hmm. Outside of other things that you can think of that have happened to you in relationshiping environments, be it, on LinkedIn or in person at events that you, you and I go to HR Southwest. I'm sure people walked up to you uh, as they did me. What are some things that you found that you're like, nah, you really yeah. don't need to do that. Yeah. I think um, <clears throat> the, the unsolicited resume is one that happens a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing for you and I to strike up a conversation at an event and, and we're talking and I find out that you're in transition and you're in search mode and I say, hey, you know what? <clears throat> Send me a resume. I'd love, I'd love to take a look, and, and maybe I've got somebody in my network that I can make an introduction to, or if, you know, if if you're okay with it, maybe I can give you some feedback or whatever. But that's usually after <clears throat> a, a period of time talking, getting to know somebody, right? Um, when when you haven't even asked for it, and, and you you walk away from the conversation, and all of a sudden you're just getting hit with, hey, you know, here's my resume. And a lot, a lot of times it's not even like there's really like no even like like intro it's just like it's an email with like the resume test and that's it and you're like okay so I, I guess i'm now supposed to like blast this out to my network i mean like i, I don't like no. so the unsolicited resume resume i think is is <clears throat> that's one that's that's kind of a, a pet peeve um you know again i'm 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 all for for helping um and, and doing what i can to kind of connect the dots and if there's again if there's someone in my network or, um, that I know that, that I think can help, man, I'm, I'm all about that all day long. I love making introductions to people. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like being a professional matchmaker, but, uh, but the unsolicited resume is, is, is a tough one for me. So uh, I'll go ahead, Javier. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, that's a really good question, Sal. Uh, I remembered uh, on my transformation out of, professional football it was when I got my crash course in relationshiping and networking. And I just remember how to, to your point earlier, it was, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't feel it was productive. I didn't feel I could be productive at it. I kind of shot away from it. I was a guy who, you know, would see if there was someone there who I knew, 
I would kind of, you know, conversate with them, try to keep that conversation going. I wasn't very outgoing. It's just a lot of things that I had to learn that I had, mm -hmm. to, first of all, realize and then learn how to address it and then actually do it. So, yeah, I was just interested in, in if you have anything that you're willing to share about what was your biggest uh, hurdle or your biggest light bulb moment, if you will, about how to raise your relationship and game to the next level. I totally understand that everybody's on different, different places, on different levels, but mm -hmm. looking back at your own experiences from where you were to where you are now, is there a major thing that you kind of had to optimize for yourself or you just kind of been? You know, I, I think one thing that um, <clears throat> a, lot of, man, a lot of good questions. Um, I was never I, I don't know how or when I made the made the transformation. I mean, you know, I just think back to like my my younger years. I was not very comfortable, like public speaking or, or speaking, you know, um, to large groups or anything like that. I just it, I mean, it terrified me. Um, the thought of standing up in front of a room and giving a presentation or anything like that just terrified me. And I don't, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't know how I, I don't know when or how I overcame that, but like now I, now I love it. I mean, I, I actually, I, I mean, I, I still get, uh, I get anxious, but it's like a, it's like a good anxious. It's like a, a feel before you step on the field before a game. Anxious. Uh, <laughs> like, you're not, you're not scared, uh, but you're, you're just, you're, you're amped up, you know? And, um, and so, and I don't know how, I don't know what it was. I mean, I didn't like go to like, I didn't go to a Toastmasters class or anything like that. I just, over time, I just kind of, um, I think, I think now that I'm talking about, it, I think maybe what it was is once you get comfortable, once you realize and you get comfortable with who you are and, and your story and the content and you and you kind of, you kind of come into your own, like, okay, I, I know what I'm doing as an HR professional. I don't really question that. I know who I am. I know what I'm about. When you're comfortable with yourself, maybe that's when you are open to that. So there's there's one thing. But the other thing too is, with regards to relationshiping, is you you, you got to be open. You, you, you got to be open. And what I mean by that is, you know, um, <laughs> so, so so I'm I've I've always said I've kind of said this throughout you know with with my my videos my my, my podcast is you I mean the thing about networking and relationshiping is it can happen anytime anywhere any place it can happen at an event it can happen standing in line at the grocery store it can happen I told told you guys I think I mentioned on, uh, before I met uh, I met a great HR connection you know uh, at the Nordstrom dressing room um, when we first moved to Dallas my wife was trying on a dress his wife was trying on a dress. We struck up a conversation because we were both University of Texas graduates and um, both turned out to be in HR and we made a connection. So part is being open to that, <clears throat> being open to the conversation. And some of that's mindset. When you go into a networking event, if you're still stuck on that project at work, your mind's focused on work, or your mind's focused on what's going on with the kids at home, and your phone's going off and all those things, you can have a really hard time kind of being focused on, on, and being appearing, and there's a psycho, there's a psychology to it, right? When you go to a networking event, you can appear closed or you can appear open and mm -hmm. if you're closed. Not a lot of people are going to come up and talk to you <clears throat> or they're not going to want to talk to you, but if you're open and um, you just got to kind of be, got to be kind of listening for the opportunities and, and kind of waiting for those opportunities. And, um, yeah, I, th I think that, you know, there's just a mindset. I'm guilty of this. I will tell you, though, when I'm on a plane, I know a lot of people say, oh, that's one of the best times to, like, get to know people because, you know, you're in a confined space. I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty selfish when I get on a plane. I'll be, if I'm by myself, I'm telling you, I'm putting, my, <laughs> I'm putting my AirPods in and I'm listening and I'm just, I'm like, I just don't, I don't like talking on the plane. I just, I don't know why, but I don't. And so that's kind of my one area where I'm like, no, this is, this is my time. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna sleep. I'm gonna listen to music. Or I'm gonna, you know, listen to audiobook or something like that. That's that's my time. But um, outside of that, I usually try to keep a pretty open, open mind in terms of realizing that, you know, my next, uh, my next uh, relationship could come from anywhere. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, Seth. The 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 person who wants to network a relationship 
has to read the yeah. audience. So just as you said, you know, if you're if you're on a plane and you don't want to be talked to, that happens to I think all of us who get on a plane. Sometimes we don't want to talk, but you got that person who wants yeah. to. So I think it's um, it's critical. Where are you, where are you from? Where are you going? Stand. What are you going to do? Yeah, you know, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's important to read the audience for anyone out there relationship. I think that's a good good point too. We we talk about um, amongst us what's happening with our landscape, um, social unrest, social injustice, COVID, all these different things have impacted the way we relationship. Mm. You know, no longer can we shake hands, at least for now, uh, or you can, but it's just, uh, it's, it's such a different world, so to speak. So what are, what is, uh, what are your thoughts in terms of how do people um, assimilate themselves or acclimate themselves to this new environment of networking and relationshiping during the times of COVID, during things like this where we're not really face to face, how best do you approach that? Because the dynamics are way different. Yeah, totally different. Um, I mean, I'm 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 I miss being um, in person, face to face. Um, so you know, when when that time comes and we're able to to get back to that safely, it'll be great. But but it is going to be really interesting. I mean, you think about this not only from a networking perspective but think about from a from an interviewing perspective as well right so imagine you know you're a candidate and you're going in for for an in-person interview do you do you extend your hand to shake do you not are you going to be viewed one way like man i cannot believe that guy came in for an interview and just stuck out his hand like who would do that like you know so now all of a sudden as a as a as a candidate you're overthinking all the stuff like should i you know should i shake should i not shake if i don't is that rude and so I feel like there's this, almost like this whole new social etiquette that's going to be written um, uh, unofficially about, you know, like like I've been in some situations recently, and I've just simply asked people like, hey, are you comfortable with with, with a handshake? And if they say yes, I say okay, great, then you know, I shake hands. But but I ask first, I don't just simply, you know, go to it. I, I ask. Um, and so you know, I just you know, when you're in, in a, imagine being in a in a small conference room in an interview. You know, are you wearing a mask? Are you not wearing a mask? Are they going to be kind of weird if they can't see your face? And I mean, again, there's just all these new dynamics that are, are <clears throat> I don't know, I, it's, it's it's an interesting world now. And it's, I think there's going to be this kind of this new social uh, etiquette that, that uh, it's written uh, that's going to be fascinating. But um, but for now, this works. I, mean, I, I, I love the, the technology that we have. I love being able to, to, to see you guys and talk to you guys like this and um, you know, I'm just looking forward to that time when we can, can do it all together in person safely again. I think I would be allergic to your office anyway, but uh, <laughs> I mean, my, my mouse pad. I mean, I, I mean, no, uh, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Sal brought up a good point with the COVID situation, and Sal and I talked about this earlier this week. What advice would you give somebody that's trying to network and? you know, possibly find a new job while they're working? Um, be, you know, they can be more intentional on finding other opportunities, but do it in a, I mean, a tasteful way. Yeah. I, I would think it would be even tougher, I think, you know, if I'm just trying to put myself in that situation, if I'm working and I'm trying to look for a new opportunity while I'm still working um now that you don't have uh, in-person events happen so you don't have like after hours mm -hmm. after hours you know network events it's going to be it's going to be more you know, virtual happy hours and things like that um yeah it, it, i mean it's it's going to be tough I'd, I'd say be very um selective i think it would be easy for someone to get overwhelmed by um spending a lot of time and burning a lot of calories on things that don't really bear much fruit. Um, so I'd say be very selective, you know, about uh, the, the, the virtual events that you're attending and as much as you can beforehand, try to know who's going to be there. It's always good. I love most of the things now we'll, we'll show you an RSVP list. So you know, who's going to be there, who's not going to be there, how many people are going to be there. I mean, you know, it's very different getting them ready to go to a network event that's got four other people as opposed to, you know, 54 other people. Um, yeah, I'd say be very intentional and very selective. Yeah, preparation is key in networking. And, and I know uh, I realized that when I got 
when I was done with football, you know, get going to networking events. And like you said, even the networking events when you're showing up there physically, you a lot of times you saw the RSVP list. Mm-hmm. And you can pretty much pick out who you want to talk to, even though that might not seem as organic <laughs> as like, like, you know, a natural way of meeting somebody. But I believe and Javier and I know like in football is all about preparation and being prepared, yeah. prepared, knowing your story, being as authentic, being vulnerable as you can when you get out there and meet people. Cause most of the time you can read somebody, like you said earlier, you can read if they're kind of just here, you're transactional, you just a number to them. Or if it's something that's genuine. Yeah. 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 I like that. I think the other thing too, when you when you're able to see like an RSVP list and you see who's there, it may be someone that you you already know. But then if I see a name that looks familiar and I don't know them, I always my immediate thought is like a mutual connection. Who do I know that I know is connected to them? And so if I if if I say I kind of tell myself like, hey, if, if I get a chance to meet this person, I know that I've got something to talk about because we have a mutual connection in this person. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so I always try to find out what's the common ground. What's the common ground that I have with them? Because, because, uh, and then I don't. Again, I don't like. Uh, it's not like a surgical strike where I'm like, okay, I, I got to hit these five people because I see them. They're on my list. Um, I'm like, well, hey, if I, I, I run into them, fantastic. I know I've got some common ground. If I don't, no sweat. I'm not going to worry about it. So. Yeah, and uh, one thing with football uh, with me that i didn't do um when i first got done i didn't use the i played in the nfl or cfl thing i didn't tell anybody Mm. and uh it took my district manager and somebody uh that worked in his office like no you need to use that so is that is that like good or bad or is there a tasteful way of doing it I, I think there's a I think there's an in between because I, th- I I I get what you're saying. I think sometimes I think sometimes guys like you in, in your position, some people would would overuse that or maybe use that inappropriately for their advantage because they think you know well just because I play in the NFL I feel like I can do this this and this, and so I think there's a humility there that is very um, attractive. The people, I think, uh, I think that that's a great approach. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hide it, um, and so it may come up. I think there is a way to to do it um, uh, appropriately, but I think sometimes people just go out loud, like, and and it's kind of like an like an entitlement thing, like, hey, because I did this, then I should get this, this, and this, and I think that is not the right way to do it. But they I think- made me switch my card, so this was my card used to look like. <laughs> It was an actual trading card that was a business card. That's awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> I, it's not me. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I didn't like it, but like mm-hmm. I think you hit the nail on the head. It, there's a tasteful way of doing it because it is a great conversational st- starter. It opens up. I mean, any Absolutely. and everybody in the state of Texas want to talk to uh, talk about football anyway. Absolutely. That's half the battle, right? With relationshiping is just how do you break the ice? Yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah. It, the cliche, you know, what do you do? It, that definitely is. Uh, mm-hmm. Javier, Javier. Robbie, I would I would leverage it. But like you said, tactfully, I, I usually have a different problem. I have to proactively tell them that I didn't play in the NFL ahead of ahead of the conversation just because that just to prevent them from asking. So that's right. Despite what you may think. Right. I, uh, right. I can see how they may think that. So I usually tell them beforehand, especially when I'm standing next to Javier and, and Rambi. <laughs> I mean, sometimes people come up to me and they're like, "Hey, you kind of look like a, a famous movie star, like a, or a model." And I'm like, "No, really, I'm really not. No, I mean, <laughs> hard work looking that good, Seth. It's hard work. You guys got people problems. <laughs> <laughs> this um this topic of relationshiping, obviously, it it is an appropriate thing to to really discuss, especially given the the nature of COVID and uh, the dynamics of having to be able to do that. We brought up a lot of good things of strength and vulnerability, you know, the, the, the ability or the need to be vulnerable so that we can um, 
be authentic. And I think it also puts the other people at ease so that they are also mm -hmm. vulnerable and that conversation goes uh, well. Uh, build relationships before the ask, you know? People yeah. uh, often go right to the, to the ask before really developing a relationship. And I think that's key for folks to understand. Um, and then being empathetic. Rambi and Javier and I talk about this all the time that we all think, and, and Seth, you probably agree, the, um, the society in general has kind of devolved into the lack of empathy. And it's degenerated into a point where, you know, it's either one side or the other, and then there's a lack of empathy. And I think in relationships uh, in general, uh, it's important to understand both sides and come to a, a common uh, common ground, if you will. So uh, we, appreciate, we appreciate you coming on the show. This has always been a pleasure hanging out with you. We, sh we wish it was live. Um, if, if people want to reach out to you and contact you, what's, what's a good way to contact you? Uh, LinkedIn is going to be the best way to find me. Yeah, I'm, that's that's where I'm the most active. So they can just Seth McCauley um, on LinkedIn. And, you know, that's I'm a pretty open. Despite everything I said, I'm a pretty open connector. So there's not a lot of people that I won't accept LinkedIn invites. Just my only ask is that you just don't turn around and try to sell me something right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. we'll post your, your cell phone, too, while we're at it. So don't worry about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what no I, give, I gave you my social security number, right? I mean, yeah, I got that. You need one, there's maiden name or anything? Okay. Yes, got it. <laughs> uh, any any events or, or projects you'd like to to promote? Um, you know, right now, no. Uh, there's there's really no new projects that I can um, think of at the moment. Um, what's, on the horizon, what's on the horizon for your show? You know, I, I took my, so my show's on kind of a hiatus, um, uh, probably, I guess, in February. Um, uh, I, I, I took a break from the show. I've got a couple of uh, episodes that are recorded that I've not pushed out. And so, and then this little global pandemic hit. And so, and and work got, uh, you know, as it should, got my, my full attention. And so, you know, I need to find the appropriate time to uh, to get things back in gear. I've got in the last several months, I've made some incredible, um, some incredible new relationships that have been um, have been made and been built, and and some that I think will make for some really really great uh, podcast uh, episodes. So um, I'm looking forward to getting things cranked back up again here soon. So. There's some great content you have. That's great. Great. more the video thing. I kind of like the because I use Zoom for my uh, for the for the ones I don't do in my truck. I use uh zoom but i do like the uh, the video thing so i might uh might shift and do a little bit kind of like what you guys are doing with the the video podcast so. there you go yeah. always inspiring we've got uh some rapid fire questions for you mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. right off the top. all right you ready i'm ready what's one bucket list city one bucket list city um outside of tulsa oklahoma what's the other one Oh dang it! Um, I'd say maybe like 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 Dublin, like Ireland. I think Ireland would be really cool. To check out. I've got stuff. I'd say Dublin, Ireland. Excellent. Well, uh, just on a side note, the third is our fifteenth wedding anniversary. We were supposed to be in Dublin, so really? that, that resonates. Uh, that resonates with me. Um, what's the best piece of advice you ever received? Oklahoma barbecue. <laughs> yeah, you know, there are some good barbecue in Oklahoma. The best piece of advice I ever received. Um, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I'll, I'll go back to early in my early in my HR career. I remember somebody telling me um, two important things that you need to remember when it comes to HR: don't mess with people's pay and don't mess with people's benefits. So, like those are that was kind of like do not. Don't you know monkey around with those, you know, with benefits with, with what people are getting paid and what what their benefits are. So I was Amen. like, all right. Favorite yeah. movie or book or why? Favorite movie, The Godfather. Hands down. Love The Godfather. What's your favorite line in that movie? Oof. Monday, Tuesday, Monday. <laughs> um boy, why there are so many great lines. Um Put you on the spot, Seth. I know, I know. Um, 
Boy, I'm drawing a blank. Um, there, there's a scene that I'm thinking of, and this actually, um, this might be from Godfather 2, not, not one, um, where the senator and Michael Corleone are in his office. Uh, it's a great, I, I, I watch that clip on YouTube a lot just because it's such a great scene. And the senator is basically, um, you know, blackmailing him and, and uh, putting him in an awkward position. And uh, Michael Corleone says, you know, Senator, you can, ha you can have my answer now. Um, the answer is no. And, and instead of you trying to get money from me, I'm, I'm going to make you pay for all these, these things, the gaming licenses. And da, da, da. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's a very powerful scene. Those are powerful series of movies. Yeah. Except for number three. Three was kind of. Yeah, I agree with you there. What, was kind of what is your biggest pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve? What's my what's my biggest pet peeve? Yep. Man, you know, when people sing the wrong words to songs that I know the right words to, that drives me nuts. <laughs> that drives me nuts. I mean, I I'm like, the songs that oh, where did you get that? No, that's not what it says. No. That's that's one of my biggest pet peeves. My biggest pet peeve is when Hoppy starts rapping and it's just the wrong words. He does that all the time off the top of his head. Top of the dome, he just doesn't get the words right. That's categorically incorrect. <laughs> All the time is right, especially off the top of the dome. <laughs> You're really good at it, by the way. That last question. Describe yourself as a teenager in three words. Oh. Um. Hmm. Aimless. Um, skinny <laughs> and uh, fun, aimless, skinny, and fun. Yeah, all right, yeah, you evolved quite a bit. Then. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm, a I'm a different person now than I was then. So you, were awesome. the, you were the fun, skinny kid. I was a fun, and, and I had hair, I had blonde hair. That's right. Excellent. Javi, what do you got? Awesome. Yeah. Hey, we really appreciate you uh, coming on to our show, Seth. And this is great. Thanks, guys. Dropping some jewels of knowledge and, and sharing uh, your wealth of expertise in the many fields and talking to us about the, the art and science of uh, relationshiping and how it's a necessary component of transformation. So uh, on, on uh, the dope experience, uh, developing one's perspective every day, we uh, take some time to give out some recommendations, uh, especially um, with what we're seeing in the world today. And we all just need to be more supportive with each other, have a little bit more empathy with ourselves and with others, and just do our best to help each other and uh, do it out of caring. So here on the Dope Experience, sharing is caring. So we share, uh, take this time to share something profound by way of a book or a quote or a movie that you feel someone can benefit from if they choose to tap into it. So Robbie, can you set us off today as our first Dope recommendation? Yep. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go with a book. Just listen. I feel it's uh, people don't listen nowadays. Uh, is a quote by Brene Brown that I heard before is uh, certainty blocks out curiosity. So I feel like a lot of people go into these situations, these conversations, and they, they're they certain they're stuck in their position and they're not curious and want to listen or even ask questions about why that person feels the way they feel. It's, and it's definitely needed in networking. So that's why I'm going to go with just listen. All right. Yeah, or yes. Yeah. What about you, Javier? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, no, that's a good pick. My pick. I'm gonna go with uh, Judy Judith Glazer, and she writes a book called Conversational Intelligence. And it's funny. We, you know, you picking these books. We're talking about this uh, this topic and how being able to communicate your thoughts and ideas and being able to do it in an environment with other people to develop some kind of a relationship. 
I think that involves a lot of different skill sets and a lot of different abilities. And um, yeah, I really like how uh, Miss Glazer goes in and what it takes to 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 listen as well as communicate with a high level of intelligence. So, uh, conversational intelligence by Judith Glazer. Get the audio book. What you got for us? Uh, Let's see. I've got uh, and something that Seth said earlier, uh, and it was about the story of him going in and basically stopping from Dallas to Frisco. He just kind of stopped and did it. Uh, we we all know Fanny Dunnigan. Uh, we were uh, great. We were uh, lucky enough um, to be on her show a couple weeks ago, and and Fanny and uh, I and Seth are, are good friends as well. And she always mm -hmm. says, "Do it scared. Just kind of jump in there." And one thing, it mm -hmm. just is so. Oh, do one thing every day that scares you. And I think that's so uh, appropriate and uh, kind of defines what Seth did that one day. He stopped the truck. He just did it in the, um, and, and just jumped right in there. So yeah. do one thing every day that scares you. I think that's a, that's a good um, mantra. So what do you have for us, Seth? Some words of wisdom from you. I, I've, got, I've got two. Can I have two? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I've got I've got one one is a quote and it's uh, something that I heard uh, back in, in college and it, it always stuck with me. That would be at the University of Texas, by the way. Um, it always it's stuck, with me, <laughs> which was um, smooth sea never yielded a skilled sailor, and uh, so that's been that has been attributed to, to, to several people, but I, it always stuck with me because I just remember like. You know, uh, unless you go through the trials, the tribulations, and the rough times, you're really not going to be proficient, uh, a proficient sailor or proficient in life. So there's that the quote. And then uh, the other thing I, th I throw out to the group, I think you guys, a lot of people are, are familiar with. I got turned on to this a couple months ago, but um, uh, Emmanuel Acho, who was a former player uh, for the University of Texas, and, and um, then he went to ESPN and did some things, but he has really started up, um, uh, stirred up and started up some great conversations. He has got a, a YouTube series that he's created called Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, and he's bringing all kinds of guests. Uh, I think most recently he had Roger Goodell, which was pretty interesting. Um, and he's just, you know, just a lot of much needed uh, conversation that uh, he's out there just leading the charge. And so uh, it's pretty, pretty good stuff there. I'd, recommend anyone tune in, check it out. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Seth, we very much appreciate your time, buddy. Uh, it's always good to see you. Hopefully sooner than later, we can all get together, break bread over some Texas barbecue. That'll be uh, awesome. Or, tacos or sushi or whatever you'd like. But uh, thanks again for coming. We appreciate everyone joining us today. Uh, join us next time for a new episode of The Dope Experience. I'm Sal Vergara with Mr. Rombie Bryant and Javier Collins. We'll see you next time. Stay dope. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Dope Experience. Our hope is that you're left with a new perspective to formulate a blueprint of growth and transformation. Make sure you subscribe to us on Spotify or wherever you consume podcasts. Stay dope.